Hello, 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 and welcome back to Imperfectly Perfect. Why is this so low? You know, I know I got a double chin, but it ain't that bad. <laughs> uh, just a little, right? Um, let's see. Let me just adjust this a little, guys. I know I should have done it before, right? Um, anyways, um, it is 2.51 a.m. Look at that. You have two of them. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, I decided that since I've been trying to fall asleep since 10 o'clock um, p.m. and it hasn't worked, right? So I usually talk, and I'm trying to talk low because I already hear her sleeping, right? Um, I usually talk about insomnia a lot, right? And how a lot of people are not aware that insomnia is a huge part of narcolepsy, right? Um, and it can happen for many, many different reasons, right? And you know, one of the things that I noticed way back when, um, when I was first diagnosed, that every time I would wake up, I was always starving. So it was always like this, this hunger, right? And, and it was funny because like I woke up to, today at 6 a.m. Well, not today, yesterday, excuse me. I woke up yesterday, which was Thursday, at 6 in the morning, um, after sleeping probably roughly like around three hours. And, <laughs> you know, took the kids to the bus stop, did what I had to do, did not nap at all. I, I did make it to a spin class this e um, last week, <laughs> yesterday evening. You see, that my day's confused. And my right arm it kept on feeling like I was going to have um, cataplexy. I, I don't know about you, but um, let me just adjust the light, adjust the light a little. Um, <laughs> ooh, I like the blue. I, I can feel them when they're coming, if that makes any sense. And, you know, when I came back home, I was like, okay, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be, I'm going to sleep good, right? And not, not happening. Um, I had my protein shake. I, I did my little routine and stuff to try to get to sleep, lay down in bed, and nothing. And it, it's it's kind of weird, right? Because if you tell people right that you're having a hard time sleeping, uh, they automatically assume or think that you're worried or you're overthinking or you're full of anxiety and this and this and that. And I literally had nothing to do but to go to bed, right? The house was clean, the kids were showered, the kids were in bed, everybody was like sad. So there was nothing um, that I can think of anyways that was stopping me from going to sleep other than it's just one of those days, right? Um, I've talked about it before where I, I have been up, you know, 36, 37 hours straight with no, and, and when I say no sleep, I'm pretty sure that I'm having little like micro sleep, um, probably with my eyes open, I'm probably doing automatic behaviors without realizing it, but what I mean is like no actual sitting down or laying down where I'm actually like closing my eyes, right? So, so far... I mean, in about three hours, it'll be 24 hours, right, of being fully awake, because I did a nap. And I'm going to see how long this one is going to last. We'll see, you know, it's, it's always different with everything. So then I'm kind of like sitting here, and I'm like, okay, what am I supposed to be doing? <laughs> because I, I have, I have been lacking on this channel, my other channel, and... I did. I, I slept a lot. Like the last couple of months, I've been sleeping. I had surgery back in October. My sister had a baby in November. I just had a lot going on. I had a really bad flare up of my psoriatic um, arthritis. So <laughs> I have been sleeping a lot. And now it's like my body just doesn't want to sleep. And it, it's not, it's not this insomnia like. I want to go to sleep or like my body like I am literally awake 
like my body just my body my mind everything just wants to get the day started so so you know what screw it after a couple hours in bed and a failure to fall asleep i was like you know i'm gonna get up and make a video and kind of show people like the in the moment when it's happening and that's basically what i'm doing um once i'm done with this which is gonna be very quickly <laughs> I am probably going to start working on some like posts and some stuff that I want to do and you know probably around five-ish or so I'll start meal prepping for dinner for, <laughs> for later um, and that's more with like the hopes um, that I'll crash at one point or another uh, and actually sleep so I would get done as much as I can now so that if I do crash I'm not falling behind like I have been. Other than that, um, everything's been pretty okay I guess. Um, kids got sick um, one after the other but it was not, you know, it was just it's like a cold. <laughs> Um, everybody was sick for like 48 hours, um, at a time. <sighs> Don't mind the yawning. That has been going on since Tuesday, actually. Um, it was so embarrassing. I was in, I go to spin class Tuesdays and Thursday evenings. And Tuesday, all I did was yawn, like, the entire class. And it was funny because then I was looking for some photos today and... I, I think I found photos from like 2017 when I was like working out and I had actually recorded myself and I had done screenshots and it's like that was the first time that I realized that I was yawning because it, it's just become something like automatic that just kind of happens and you're like unaware of it so when I was in spin class on Tuesday I was noticing it and I was just like oh, seriously you know because you're there with other people and you know, you don't want to make the instructor feel like you're bored because you're not. Like, you're actually enjoying... I mean, I was, I was enjoying the class. But, anyways, <laughs> moving away from the story, I just said it because, you know, I just yawned. And people are like, my God, you're sleepy. And it's like, no. I could be dancing and partying and still freaking yawn. But, <laughs> um, other than that, I mean... It's just kind of been, I want to say, like, from October to, like, end of mid-January, not end, mid-January. It was very rough, just because there was a lot of things going on. Um, a surgery went well. Um, for those that are wondering what kind of surgery I had, um, I had a two, um, tubular ligation. Um, so I'm not having any more kids, so that's the goal anyways. Uh, <laughs> and my sister gave birth in November, towards the end of November. Then we had Christmas, New Year's, my birthday, and boom, everybody got sick. And what flared up my um, psoriatic arthritis was the fact that I had been up um, around the clock every four hours checking on one child or another um i have four kids so by the time everybody was done i unfortunately didn't during the time that they were sick when they were falling asleep i was falling asleep now they couldn't go back to school the three little ones because two of them are in the same class so because she was sick it was kind of like just keep the other one home type of thing so it became a little bit um a lot so i was I, I kind of was sleeping whenever they were sleeping right but i wasn't eating right i was eating the wrong type of foods that i know causes a flare up so literally like the day after everybody was done recovering i couldn't even talk i couldn't move my face like my muscles in my face were hurting like everything was hurting in it and it took about a good um week week and a half in bed um pushing fluids and just kind of like laying there to
to kind of get over it. But I'm better now. <laughs> well, of course, right? Because I'm going to classes and stuff. But I just kind of wanted to, you know, this is it. Like, the world is sleeping. Well, in this part of the world, anyway. And I am wide awake. <laughs> and it's funny, though, because this this is what was happening uh, prior to getting diagnosed i i would spend nights after nights wide awake and I, I, you know when i first heard the term narcolepsy again you know it's something that you kind of learn but you really don't learn it in depth right when you're in school and stuff like that and so to me, it was like something that was like, nah, that can't be like, I don't sleep. <laughs> but I remember shortly after being diagnosed, I joined a Facebook group um, for people with um, narcolepsy. And it was funny because it would be like three, four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and we'll all chat on Facebook because we failed. <laughs> to fall asleep right um as hard as we tried we just couldn't and and it's one of those things where people are like well if you get off the phone if you turn off the tv if you do this if you do that and it's like uh, that doesn't work right of course we all have our like i have my routine of like you know phone stays in the kitchen when i go to bed this and that but it's like I can be watching something that I really want. I can just pass it on, right? I could just fall asleep. I can be on the phone and fall asleep. I could be, you can be blasting the music. People are talking. People are, like, it, those rules <laughs> don't apply as much, let's just put it that way, to those that have narcolepsy with cataplexy. Um, there are days where I can fall asleep with music, with noise, with a dog barking, with everything, and I'm out. And then there's days that I can hear literally like a pin drop from like miles away. I can sleep and dream and hear other people's conversation. Um, there are days where everything bothers me and I just cannot shut out the world, noise or anything. So, because of the how complex it is, because of how unpredictable um, situations are, is very difficult, right? And it, it's difficult to to live with it. It's difficult to try and explain it to people that are not experiencing. Um, it's difficult to. <laughs> To do things right to to go out with family to go to events to have really like you know even a a romantic relationship because again if the other person is not going through it they can't really understand they can listen they can try and educate themselves but it's very 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 hard for someone without narcolepsy to to really understand, right? And I, <laughs> well, if I, like, if I wake up, let's say from, you know, I'll have days where I'll sleep like 16 hours and I'll wake up and I'm like, oh, I'm so tired, like I'm ready for bed. And somebody goes like, how can you be tired? You just woke up. <laughs> I literally tell them like I, you go 48 hours 72 hours no sleep nothing to wake you up no stimulants no coffee nothing with caffeine nothing nothing nothing, nothing. And after those 72 hours take a 20 minute nap and wake up and tell me that you're not sleepy tell me that you're not tired and then then maybe then you can have like a little taste of what it is that it feels like to wake up like this and i feel one of the hardest thing is the fact that i tried 
and I was on a medication for like over a year that allowed me to wake up feeling refreshed, feeling amazing. And I remember like once, not right away obviously, but like once I got into the system and it started working, I remember waking up and I was like, this is how I'm supposed to feel. Like this is what normal people feel like. And I remember being so excited. And unfortunately, you know, they pushed it as long as my body could handle it and enough was enough. I, um, if I kept going down that road, I was not going to wake up one of those, <laughs> one of those mornings. But that's besides the point. Um, what I'm trying to just say here is with, with everything going on around the world, right? Um, there's... There's a lot of fear, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of judgment, there's a lot of bickering, there's a lot of fighting. And my heart honestly goes out to everyone because I know what it feels like to be in fear of, of something, right? of how am I going to make it through, you know, through the day? How am I going to make it through the week? How am I going to make it from here to the, to the bus stop or whatever? But it, I, I personally stay away from the news. Um, I really do not engage in conversations when it comes to COVID, when it comes to vaccines. Uh, everybody has their opinion. Everybody has their choice. And I just personally, the time when when everything first started and I tried having conversations with people from um, different point of views, different perspectives, um, it, it became more of like, I'm right and you're wrong type of thing. And I feel like when you've gone, gone through an experience and you're going through an experience, like we are right those of us that have different not just narcolepsy but um any like invisible disability right anything where your your entire life is affected there is no i feel like you get to a point where it, it's not about trying to force other people to see or to understand or to be on my side right it's more about sharing <laughs> our experiences right um, it's about opening up about what is truly happening so because of that it really really hits me to the core when I see people going at each other like you know the name calling the this the that because people are judging other people without knowing what that person's experience is right what their history is why they've chosen the stand that they want to that they want to take and you know I know we started with the whole insomnia thing and we ended up with this um, it's just one of those things right but I am going to end this video because we're hitting almost 20 minutes and uh, I really wanted to try to keep these videos a little shorter. So thank you guys for watching. <laughs> and fingers crossed that if I do make it to the 24 hour mark, um, I don't make it to like a 48 hour mark. And if I do make it to the 48 hours mark, I'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> No, let me stop. Have a good one. And for all of those of you that are sleeping while I'm making this, I hope that you're having wonderful dreams. Bye-bye. Don't mind the one bit. <laughs>